to have salad? Because salad's good for you. But I'll starve before I get to rotten rabbit food. Hey, it won't look good in the echo, you know. We didn't think she'd let him starve. So parents return from joy trip. Damon, they've only gone to my Auntie Claire's for the weekend. Well, I'm a quick starver. Well, we're having salad, and if you don't want it, you can always get something when you go out, can't you? Yeah, that's it for go out. Just my luck, innit? The aged parents wait for the weekend, and I've got nowhere to go to stay out late. Oh, was your mates come? I don't know. We usually sort that out at home time. But I only went back for my games kit, and they'd all beat it. Well, can't you ring one of them up and find out? Yeah, well, I would, but... But what? Well, I'll be too weak from hunger if all I get is rotten salad. <laughs> He's leaving it there. Hey, Ty. What do you think he's all right, like? Um, you all right, Alan, like? Any reason I shouldn't be? No, it's just, um. well, look, if you've got something to say, say it, will you? I've got work to do in there, mate. Well, your car, you know, it's... Yeah, what about the car? Well, it's parked, you know, in front of our, um... All right, I'll move it when I come back out. OK? Hello, Dad. You're home early, aren't you? Hello, Gordon. Oh, hello, Dorothy. I didn't see your car. It's Dad's. That's because it isn't here. Dorothy's car. Your dad drove me here. What one? Not for me, thanks. I'd rather have milk. We're celebrating. Oh? Added in my letter of resignation today. And I can't say I'll be sorry if I never see another youth training scheme for the rest of my life. <laughs> Good day at school, Gordon. Uh, yeah, thanks. Oh, before I forget, letter for you. Oh. It's the advance payment for the programme. Oh. Alan Partridge sold a computer programme of Gordon's for him. Mm. Clever boy. Thank you. Well, I suppose I'd better go round, sort out Alan's share of it with him. Well, I think a cheque in the post would cheer me up, even if I have to share it with someone. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly flavour of the month with him at the moment. I'm afraid we did rather misjudge the man. Well, at least you're going with something to oil the wheels of reconciliation. Yes. Best pop round and see him, Gordon. Better get it over with. Yeah, I suppose so. Perhaps Gordon would like to reconsider that offer of a sherry first, Paul. <laughs> oh, he doesn't need any Dutch courage. Do you? You got any medium dry? <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean, Damon? N O. No. Oh, go on. I won't get legless to make a show of. You're honest. Anyway, you can't go to a party and leave me here on my own. You won't enjoy it. Do you want a bet? Oh, I'll run Gizmo to find out what the lads are doing, but he's not in. We'll ring some of the others then. But what if they're not in? Well, then an early night will do you good, won't it? Oh, but can it? going into Alan's. Nip out and see when you hear the door open and you'll see who comes out. Me? No fear. Well, I'd better go then. You can't go. Well, somebody ought to find out what he's up to. If you let me ten pence in the shilling, if you won't go, I will. 
Oh, all right, then. Listen for the door opening. Anywhere else you might get a bed sore. Aye, but I'll rub that myself. Oh. <laughs> so, you think this is it, do you, Whiskid? You think this is the first of many, eh? Well, it's only the advance, isn't it? I mean, once they start selling. Bottom left. New package from Alpha. But this program's exactly. Near as damn it identical to yours. And the clout a big house like that puts behind marking its software. Yours won't get a look in, mate. <laughs> so this is it then? This is it, boy wonder. And it's no use standing there looking sorry for yourself. Oh, right, so I'm disappointed. I admit it. Seems to me I've every right to be. Just didn't expect this to happen, that's Well, it. you should have. That's the computer business, Gordon. And that's what kids like you think they know it all, don't know. You've got to be ten steps ahead all the time, not just one. See? Look. See this that I'm working on? Ten steps ahead. What's this? I'm sorry, Alan. I don't see... Of course you don't. Because that's pioneer stuff, Gordon, lad. No, look. I'm sorry. I, I can't understand it. Well, you wouldn't, would you? But I've worked it all out in there, lad. But look, there's a... Well, you must have noticed it, but if you haven't amended this hard copy... <laughs> I thought it'd be way above your head. Tell you what I'll do. You have a drink, and I'll explain it all to you from the bootstraps up, eh, Gordon? No, Alan, listen. Go on. No, I don't want one, thanks, Alan. Can I just say something about this programme? Oh, here, yeah. come on, get it down, ya. No. Oh, that's it, is it? You're too good to drink with me, are ya? Alan, it's just this programme. It's... Well... It's garbage. Go and see what's going on. Oh. Go and see what's going on. Hurry up, oh. you'll miss it. Go on. Go and play Space Invaders instead of interrupting somebody who knows what computing's really about. Look, Alan, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean any offence about the programme. You make me sick. The lot of you! Everything all right, Gordon? Could be better. Get down, you nosy old fool! I wasn't being nosy. Are you up there? To open the window, and that's the nurse's oh. job, not the patient's. Oh! Oh, now look what you've done. I'm all unstable again now. Unstable? Oh. When weren't you? Well, it sounds as if the man's becoming a little unbalanced, to say the least. Honestly, Dad, you should see that place. It's knee deep in bottles, and that program he's working on. Where does Anna keep a turmeric? It's nowhere handy, that's for sure. I don't suppose Mum expected strangers to be looking for it. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I'm being seen as a usurper of kitchens. Or worse. Ah, but I see I'm only of secondary interest as far as the female of the species go. Eh, hey, Gordon? Well, let's see if I can provide you with the spice you require. <laughs> oh, I've every confidence. <laughs> Dad! Hmm? Honestly, Dad. Honestly, Dad, what? Well, I mean... Oh. <laughs> you mean Dorothy? Yes. For goodness sake, Gordon. <laughs> if what I think you're implying wasn't quite so preposterous, I could be very angry. Why, <laughs> Dorothy and I were, were just... You're just good friends, eh? Well, precisely. 
And frankly, Gordon, only an imaginative teenager could possibly read any more into it. Paul? Please? Not in. Again. Oh, well. There might be something good on telly for you. The Beard Man of Alcatraz. Oh, well. I hope you have a nice time anyway, Karen. <sighs> oh, all right, Cinders. What? You can come to the flaming Ball. Oh, thanks, Karen, thanks. I won't make a show, you're honest. Oh, I could... I, I hope you're not gonna kiss me. Oh, no, I'm not that grateful. Good. Now, listen, once we get there, no tagging round after me. Yeah. Oh, no messing round and making a show of me. Yeah. Damon, don't tell anyone you're my little brother. Yeah. In fact, just pretend you don't know me and don't use that bathroom before me! Oh, God. <sighs> Have you told Mum yet about your resignation? Oh, well, she isn't here to tell, is she, old son? Well, you could ring. I expect your dad didn't want to bother her, Gordon. After all, if her mother's ill. Yeah, if. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I rather think it's Gordon's version of the cryptic remark. Right, Gordon? Well, it strikes me as a bit odd that Mum goes rushing off to Grand's on the passing mention of a slight cold. Oh, Gordon, what on earth are you getting at? Well, I read Grand's letter. Didn't sound like an SOS to me. For goodness sake, Gordon, there's such a thing as reading between the lines. I mean, what other reason could your mother possibly have for dashing off? I can't imagine. Supper won't be long. Uh, no, thanks. Not for me. Come on, Gordon. What's the matter with you? Well, perhaps I'm missing, Mum. Gordon, where are you? Just out. I'm sorry about that. Kids. So naive. Yes. Well, never mind. Next time we'll eat at my place. Next time? Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Robin isn't there anymore. And once you start back at Petrochem, you could nip round at lunch times. Well, I often go home and make myself a snack. You could join me. <laughs> Dorothy, I, I... Or we could meet for pub lunches. Dorothy, look, I... Yes? Well, I just wondered if we oughtn't to give that curry a stir. But the point is, now that I'm a free agent, we can meet anywhere we please. Oh, come on, Damon! The Burtons know they've lost a dummy. Well, I thought I'd go for the hidden depths look. The what? You know, cool on the outside, but with red hot hidden depths. Damon, nobody's gonna sing that low. Oh, thanks. And Damon, if they do, I'm gonna kill you. What do you mean? I mean, keep your hands off my mates. All of them, do you understand that? But it's a party. I mean, what if they find me irresistible? I don't think we need to worry about that, Damon. Of a shock for you. Not at all. It's lovely to see you. What are you doing here? I thought I'd visit a while, if that's all right. But of course it's all right. Come on in. Bring your things in. Was that you in the doorstep earlier? Yes. <laughs> Did you fly over and come over on the boat? Boat? Oh dear, near a flung. Don't know. <laughs> oh well, at least you'll have time to stop and answer my questions. I hope. You can say you know, Heather. I mean. If it's a nuisance, me staying in that. <laughs> Just one more question. I'll give you time to answer this one. Yes? Have you had anything to eat? No. <laughs> <laughs>
Jarred off with all the people trying to talk to me. The price you pay for being so popular. Got somewhere better to go then, have you? Yeah, I promised to go and look on a little old gig. Charlie's throwing. Charlie? You know, someone wears that crown thing, waves a lot. You funny? What's your name for? Oh, yeah. So that's. That's the nicest thing anyone said to me all night. Come to think of it, it's the only thing anyone said to me all night. Don't you dance, then? Well, not on your own. You feel a fool. You can dance, can't you? Well, yeah. Come on, lad. OK. Um, you know the mate of our Karen's, are you? Karen? Grant, she's my sister. Karen Grant? I know her. It's just not one of my mates. Oh, great. Um, I don't know your name. That makes us even. I don't know yours. Yeah, Damon. Mine's Linda. Hi, Hi Linda. Hi, Damon. How are you doing? Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Well, I reckon I'm not doing too badly. I think I can hold my own. In fact, I think I can do better than that. Well, I'm properly settled in the job and get my head down to some real work. It must have been a bit hectic, though, your first few weeks. No, it wasn't, actually. Apart from Roger deciding to be difficult. Oh, dear. Anyway, changed my name back to Havisham now. That should spell it out to him. I'm sorry. Well, we all have our problems. It's how we face up to them that matters, I suppose. Yes. Anyway, I've done nothing but talk about me. How's Ireland? <sighs> and what have you been up to since I last saw you? And how's Will? Shall I just rinse these through for you? Oh, fine. Do you want to ring home or anything? Let them know you arrive safely. No. No, Allah. Maybe give him a ring tomorrow. Rose? Rose, is everything all right? Fine. Bit tired, that's all. I'll just rinse these through for you. How are you there? Oh, poor little Damon, all tired out there. No. Just walking Linda home. Linda Myers? Yeah. She said she's not a mate of yours. Oh, well, I know her. And there's no way you'd be walking around. Oh, yeah? What makes you say that? Because Linda Myers could take a pick of any lad in there. She'd want her head examined if she looked at you, Dave. Daddy! <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> it's all day I'm walking you home. Well, it's getting a bit boring, isn't it? Because you're Karen. Oh, well, I'll be seeing you later. You let us in. Damon Grant's escort at your service, madam. Oh, that was a delicious meal, Dorothy. Thank you. We aim to please. Dorothy, I, I think... I don't quite know how to say this. It's but... all right, Paul. You don't have to say anything. I think we both know how we feel. Yes, but I think we feel rather differently. I mean, I know how I see our relationship. Like-minded friends, platonic friends who enjoy each other's company, but well, you seem to have got the wrong end of the stick. And you think Gordon's the naive one? Well, I'm not sure what you mean. I don't think you know exactly what I mean. I'll spell it out for you. You're the naive one, Paul. And you don't have age as an excuse. 
Mind you, you do behave like an adolescent. Well, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Either one of us behaving like adolescents. Rubbish. What you're trying to avoid is anything that remotely smacks of risk. Oh, it was lovely, wasn't it? Nice titillating friendship with another woman. Nice safe ego trip for the middle-aged man. But anything really adult, and you come on like an affronted Victorian virgin. Well, you can relax, Paul. I'll leave you with your honour intact. Safe, boring, complacent, but intact. Dorothy, wait. Look, if I go now, you won't see me again. But if I do stay, well, it can't be as platonic friends, Paul, not anymore. Paul? Hello? Oh, hello, Anna. Do I stay, Paul? <coughs> Sorry, Anna, what? Someone here? No, no. No, there's no one here. Oh, yes, yes, I'm uh, oh, fine. Uh, darling, you'll be pleased to hear I've handed in my resignation at the YTS. Mm. Does that feel better? Oh, yes. I'll tackle the other sex layers of travel dust tomorrow. <laughs> well, just help yourself to baths. Plenty of hot water. Thanks. Any idea how long you'll be staying, Rose? Well, I... Uh... Hello? Hello, Will. Yes, I heard the phone. It stopped as I got to the front door. C could you just hang on a moment, please? Please, Heather. Please don't say I'm here. Please. Uh, hello, I'm sorry, Will. Rose. No, I haven't seen her. Yes, I'll be in touch with you if I do. Will, can I phone you back? Oh, you'll phone me tomorrow. Yes, yes, of course. OK, bye-bye, Will. Bye-bye. I don't like telling lies, Rose. I'm sorry. So I think you owe me an explanation. to have a shave. Come in if you want. Uh, I think you'll find more to shave on your legs, though. So. Oh, funny. You're as funny as you are. Anyway, what's all this sudden desire to be beautiful and heard of? Um, do I poke my nose into your private life? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll keep mine out of yours if you keep yours out of mine. 
Hey, Tay, look quick, quick. There's one. There's a hair there. Go on, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> oh, Damon, you big soft kid. <laughs> yes, well, then I'll assume that don't think so. Huh. That's because Linda Myers doesn't know you like I do. Yet. Look, Rose, I have to know what's going on. It's one thing telling your brother when he telephoned last night that you weren't here. And what when he phones again? Your mum and dad must be out of their minds with worry not knowing where you are. It's not fair on them, Rose. It's not really fair on me. Last night you said you didn't mind if I stayed here for a while. But that was before I knew you hadn't told anyone. So now you want me to go. Rose, you can't expect to involve me by being here in my home if you can't tell me why. Please, Heather, I've nowhere else to go. I only want to help you. Then let me stay here for a while. Just for a little while, please. If you'll tell me what's going on. Has there been some trouble at the hotel? Is it someone back home you're involved with? I just need some time to think, that's all. I just need some peace. Don't we all? Even build a damn big fence so you don't have to look at him. <laughs> Piss it, wasn't he, throw? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I'm in here. I'm having a bath. You've been in here for hours. I'm going off too, you know, Dave. Oh, yeah, where are you going? I'm oh, just mooching. Where are you going? Well, I'm supposed to be going around to Gizzers. All the lads going round to watch the cup final. You mean all this tarting yourself up, Sir Gizmo? Well, I sort of said I'd see Linda. More than sort of. You mean you made a date with her? Yep. I can't think what she sees in you. What, you mean apart from looks, wit, charm and sex appeal? Sex appeal? You? You've got as much sex appeal as a dead rat. Well, she said she'd meet me. Oh, you can't let her down then, can you? No. I'll give Gizmo a ring and ask him to video the match for me. Yeah, do that. Yep. Or... Or what? Well, I could meet Linda first and then take her round to Gizzers while I ask him to video the match for me. You just want to show her off to your mates? No. Well... Yeah, we'll do that then. Meet her first if she turns up. Now, will you clear off while I have me bath? Um, I haven't done my hair yet. Hey, Cam. What? You know she does turn up. Mm. Where do you think you should take her? Well, from what I've heard, she doesn't mind where you take her. Oh, great. As long as it's expensive. What? Well, I think Gary said he took her to a cocktail lounge in that big hotel. Do you know that big hotel? Oh, hey, Karen. Then it's a couple of quid, will you? A couple of quid won't make much difference, Damon. From what I hear, you've got to be really minted to show her a good time. wasn't just a couple of cans. It was a bag full. Bottles. A bag full? You didn't see it, did you? Well, I wouldn't, would I, with that thing there? You wanted it there. Hmm. It's all right for you, isn't it? But us invalids were cut off from the outside world. And I noticed there's been a drop in sick visitors as well. Thought you only wanted healthy ones. Anyway, our Kevin will be here in a bit. About time as well. Well, you can't expect people running in and out every five minutes. They've got their own lives to lead, you know. Oh, no. Don't mind me. I'll just lie here like a social outcast.
Now you can stop staring at me. All right, you'll be able to talk to me. I don't want to talk to them, so you can get lost, eh? All of you, just get lost! What do you want? Oh, come on, Car. Damn it, I'm trying to clean my teeth in here. Yeah, I'll give them out here, all them for How oh, funny. Well, just tell us about how much cocktails are. Well, a pina colada's about, about 150, I should imagine. And then, of course, she'll be expecting a meal. Oh, what do you reckon? Mm -hmm. And, of course, she'll be used to being spoiled, Damon, being an only child. How do you know? I thought you never knew that well. Well, I don't, but I asked round a bit last night. Perhaps you should have done a bit more research before you asked her out. What time are you meeting her, then? Eh, uh, about quarter two. You've just got time for another shave, then, haven't you? I'll get lost. I'll come through, Kevin, love. All right, how you, Mum? Yeah. Sal and Jess are there, love. Oh, lovely. Hello there, Dad. Thought you'd emigrated. Oh, come on, Dad. It's not that long since I was here. Time goes very slow when you're bedridden. It's been so cheerful as keeps him going. I'll make a cup of tea. Kettle's on. And don't make it so strong this time. Could have driven a diesel on the last lot you gave me. I think Mum's looking a bit tired. Mm. Quite a lot for her, really. Looking after you, managing everything on her own. Shopping. Ah, oh, mummy leg! <sighs> Cramp. It's yogging this morning. Rigid as a rock. Seer in pain. But I try not to complain. I was talking to a chap at school. His dad had suffered from a similar complaint to yours. He'd been told that a little gentle exercise was quite good for him. I mean, the doctor didn't exactly say he had to stay in bed all the time, did he? Me laddo seems to think I'm swinging the lad here. Oh, come on, Dad, that's not what I said at all. I'm sure it's not what he said. But you must admit you're not in any rush to get better. Oh, so you want me to run round risking my health and all, do you? Nobody wants to risk anything. Thanks, Mum. All I'm saying is that if you got up and about a bit more, you'd probably feel better in yourself. Attitude of mind. You what? That's what they call it. It means thinking yourself better as opposed to thinking yourself ill. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got a story for you two. Years ago, when I worked in the shed in Edge Hill, a mate of mine came in one morning, and the foreman said to him, you're looking very worried, Fred, what's the matter? He said, it's my uncle. He's terribly ill. And this foreman said, it's all in his mind. He only thinks he's ill. And you tell him when you go home tonight. I think he makes it up as he goes along. I haven't finished yet. Oh. Next morning he comes into work, and this foreman said to him, well, how's your uncle this morning, Fred? Fred said, he thinks he's dead. Well, was he? Is that the phone? Yes, I didn't answer it. Look, Rose, this has got to stop. If that was Will, he's going to phone again. And I don't see why I should lie if you don't even tell me what's going on. I can't. I put that up for the benefit of people in the close. Then they go and build a fence like that. Well, if that's the way they want it. Of course, everything's changed. Society's not the same. There's not the community spirit there used to be. Everybody's so selfish. Here, I think I could manage another drop. I'll see to it, Mum. You stay put. Now, in my younger days, people cared about people. Well, you're well enough looked after. If you're ill nowadays, you're a forgotten man. It's survived with the fittest. People have been in to see you. Yeah, till the novelty wears off. Talk about don't fence me in. 
You can't lie in your sick bed and watch the world go by for that thing. By the powers invested what in me, the? I declare this monster... What's happening, Kevin? I saw! Exterminate! Flipping Nog! Unless you want him to do you a favour. Hey! Hey, Alan! 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 You nearly hit me then! Hey. I'm sorry, Damon, lad. I'm ever so sorry. Come on, what's going into you? What's all this for? I don't know. I don't know what came over me. Hey. I'm sorry, mate. I didn't mean anything. Hey! Sorry, Edna! Well, all right, all right. We'll sort that out later. Come on, let's take it home, mate. Hey. I don't know what happened to me. I don't know what got into me. All right. See, I got annoyed with that tree. Then I got annoyed with a fence. I got angry with myself. I must be drunk. I won't sound like. Hey, steady on that. What was all that about? God only knows. Is he usually a troublemaker, that... What's his name? Alan. Hmm. No, not really. Just that things haven't been going too well for him recently, to say the least. A lot of bad luck, you mean? He does seem to stumble from one disaster to another. Is that bad luck or bad management on his part? I don't know. Well, whichever. You take a pity on the man. Nobody who's happy does that sort of thing. I wish you'd tell me why you're so unhappy. Couldn't you have talked to someone at home about it? Your mum or dad? You don't talk to dad. He tells you. Well, I can't believe you couldn't talk to a brother like Will. You like Will, don't you? Yes, you know I do. But that's not what we're talking about. Fond of him, even. He's very fond of you. Very. Did you know that? Rose, we're talking about your feelings, not mine. I'm not sure I've got any. I feel so numb. Why? I will tell you. But please, just let me sort it out in my own head first. Um, I did mean to be on time, honest. You look like you've been pulled through a hedge backwards. Yeah, it was a fence. Sounds interesting. What happened? Oh, you know what I was war heroes like. And I'd like to talk about it. Well, nearly never. Should have seen it. Neighbour of ours smashing his fence in. Of course, I stopped him. It's a pity the parents were away. Must be finest hour. Just as well they are. The stays in there. Yeah, I know. Um. Well, you look. You look great. I hope so. Took me long enough. Mind you, if I'd known you're going to be late. Um. Just before we go anywhere. <laughs> what? Well, it's just I'd arranged to go around and watch the cup final with the lads at Gizzes. Oh, great. No, no. I just want to go around and ask him to video it for me. Am I supposed to come with you? Well, yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, all right.
No. I don't remember you at all from junior school. I'll send you in above you. I used to walk behind me into assembly and stand on the back of my shoes. <laughs> all the rotten ones were in the old group. I thought it were nice. Yeah, well, I only got nice later. <laughs> anyway, the old group were all goody goody. Hang on. Where are you that one that used to have the daft plats? Used to sing in Parents' Day. Don't carol service. I still do. I need to sing. What a school, isn't that? Yeah, I'm with a band. Yeah. Yeah, it's what I want to do. Sing with a band. I've already made a record with a local band that I sing with. What independent label, isn't that? Yeah, it's no big deal, really. I think it is. I think you're great. People aren't great because of things like that, Damon. No, but well, it makes you more unusual, doesn't it? If I could type, you wouldn't be surprised if I was a typist. I can sing that, so. No, but, well, singing's different, isn't it? You have to, well, like people for who they are. I mean, I could be the best singer in the world, but the rottenest person. Oh, I don't think you are, though. Well, what I mean is, I, you know, I think you, you know. I'm going to see if he's in. You're late. The match has started. Yeah, uh, uh, this is Linda. But uh, sh sh she's, she's a girl. Yeah, they could have used you in the Observer Corps, Giz. Yeah, but uh, does she, does she uh, like, you know, uh, forty? It's all right. You can't talk to me. No one's looking. <sighs> well, what are you saying, Dad? You don't want me to put the fence back up now. You don't want me to put the fence back up at all. What? It was your idea in the first place. Are you now saying you don't want it? What I am saying is, leave it. Yes, but leave it now, forever, what? Flipping all that. Why am I a sick man being put under all this pressure? Because if Kevin's here, he might as well put it back or throw it out altogether. That's right, Dad. It was your idea in the first place. It wasn't. It was too. You can't see over it, can you? And it keeps the light out, doesn't it? We've been like a couple of rabbits in a hutch since that went up, and well, you know it. Look, Dad, do you want the fence to go back up? No. I'm sorry? Um, no! Get rid of the damn thing! Look, all I'm asking you to do is telephone Will and let him know you're all right. He must be frantic with worry not knowing where you are. And he may even have telephoned the police by now if you haven't told anyone where you're going. Just let him know where you are. I can't. Then if you won't, I will. Please, Heather, don't! Then do it yourself. Yes, all right. I'll do it. Later. Now! I'll do it! Do you want me to leave the room? It's your house. Hello, Will. It's me. I'm all right. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I can't tell you. I can't. You hate me. I just can't. Oh, Rose. Is it so terrible? I mean, I'm not bothered, really. I leave school in a couple of weeks, anyway. Have you said what you want to do? Well, apart from not wanting to go to school, no. It'll be great. I hope so. Damon? Yeah? It's very nice here, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was deciding where we were going, wasn't I? I think that's how it all started. Um. Well, I know you like somewhere nice. So, like, there's that wine bar. That... Wine bar? Well, yeah. I mean, I know you like cocktail bars. And I suppose I could afford one cocktail each if you... Do you really want to go somewhere like that? They rip you off like no one's business. I sort of thought, 
A walk in the park or something? The park? Oh, but if you'd rather go to a wine bar. Oh, no, no. The park's great. I mean, cocktail bars and that. It's a bit boring, isn't it? Once you've seen one cherry on a stick, you've seen them all. I like the park. And after that, we could get something to eat, I. Oh, yeah. I don't eat a lot, do you? My dad says I can eat some under the table. Oh. <laughs> but if you don't like fish and chips... Fish and chips? Yeah, there's that great chip at the big gate in the park. Have you ever been? Oh, yeah. Me and Gizmo went. We had double fish, chips and curry sauce each. I thought you said you said not eat a lot. Oh, well, I'm unpredictable, mate. I suppose that's part of my charm. Is that better? Yes, thanks, Heather. I know you'll find this hard to believe, but you will feel better if you tell someone. You said to Will on the phone that he'd hate you if you told him. You know, I don't believe he would, no matter how bad you think it is. People love you, Rose. Perhaps you should... Consider how hurtful it is when you underestimate how much. <laughs> Come on, I think we both need it. Come on, it'll calm me down a bit. No, I'd better not. Is that it? Are you pregnant? No! Yes. Yes! I am! in your muck all through. Sorry. Come and take your shoes off. Leave them by the back door. What have you been doing? Playing footy. In your good shoes? Oh, welcome home, Dame and lad. Had a nice day. You must think I like working my fingers to the bone. I forgot the echo. No! What's this doing? Nothing. What have you done? Nothing. Just fell apart on its own, did it? Oh, I got ripped. I gathered that. How? Playing footy. Move it! Look, it doesn't matter now, does it? Doesn't it? No! I'm leaving at the end of the week, aren't I? Oh, that gives you the right to rip your clothes to shreds, does it? Oh, you can mend it, can't you? Oh, look you, Johnny, my lad. There's mothers sending their kids to that school and they can't afford to feed them properly, let alone kick them out in 30 pound blazers. That would have done one of them. Now it's ruined. It was ruined anyway. I can't wait for next week. Wait till you've got to start kidding yourself out with clothes. I'll manage. Oh, I knew that it's back in fashion, you might. Where are you going to get the money from? As does anyone else. I'll get a job. Where? I don't know, yeah. Have you done anything about it? Not yet, no. Why not? Cos I haven't left school yet. So you're just gonna laze around here for months on end, are you?
Look, Mom. What's wrong? Have you had an arc with me, Dad? There's 86 kids leaving our school next week, and only seven of them have got jobs. I'm sorry about me blazer. That was my fault. I'm sorry about me shoes. That was my fault and all. And I'm sorry about not having a job. But that's not my fault. Come on, Mum. I'm not a baby anymore. Get used to this arrangement. What? Coming home from work to a cooked meal? Oh, I. What's wrong? Nothing. Yes, there is. What made you choose this? It's being pregnant. I just got a real taste for boiled bacon and cabbage. Yeah. Last time Will was home, he made a real thing about his boiled bacon and cabbage. I know. I mentioned it. I. He rung up this morning. You told him I was here. Yes, I did. You told him I was here and you promised me you wouldn't tell a soul. I had to, Rose. You promised. I had to. Will you come and finish your meal? You're being so selfish, Rose. I think you're being a suffering martyr, but you're not. You're just being selfish. And how can I be selfish? to come away rather than bring shame on my family. Look, will you stop lying to me? You know as well as I do that your family knows you're pregnant. Everyone knows you're pregnant. You've lied to me. Better than breaking a promise. Rose, it is the easiest thing in the world to stick to a promise. Your family are out of their minds with worry about you. And my conscience is clear. Kept my promise? I'm not worried about that. Sure. Fancy talk, that's all that is. Will you grow up, Rose? God, what more have you got to do? Why are you putting a bit on? Looking natural's better. Looking natural takes twice as long. I like you with nothing on. I prefer you with nothing on. You've got a mind like a sewer. Oh, don't be funny, you know what I mean? No makeup. Yeah, well, I've finished now. Well, where are we going? I don't know. You can choose. Oh, thanks. Because you're paying. What? Thanks. Why don't you want to marry Timmy? He wants to marry you. He doesn't know what he wants. The poor wee man's standing there with his gob wide open while everyone's organising his wedding for him and telling him what a fine man he is to be doing the decent thing. Telling me I should be down on my knees thanking him. Nobody asks what I want. What do you want? I just want this. Have you thought about it? Nothing but think about it. What a doll you're having. She tells me to grow up one minute and treats me like a baby the next. No. I'd say the same to anyone. Yes, babies are lovely. You can feed them, bath them, smell their lovely hair, rock them to sleep. They're not so lovely when your friends come round and you want to go out for the evening and there's no babysitter. Or you have to give up a job or a career you love. Stay at home and wash nappies. You don't understand. Oh, I think I do. You don't. Night's out. And where are we to get the money from for nights out at all? You 
parents have money. Oh, why? But my friends don't. Nights out. I walk around the park and share a bag of chips. A job. A career, even. Where's that coming from in Belfast, I ask you? We've nothing to do all day. Well, this'll give me something to do. Until you get sick of it. I'll never get sick of it. Hiya. Hiya. Back again. Uh, looks like it. Hi. Have you come to see Ether? Hi. All right. Hello there. Back again, eh? All the evidence points to that. Aye. You think it's gonna rain? Either rain or go dark before morning. Aye. Nice seeing you. See ya. Aye, see ya. If it rains, we'll get our taxi. Behave. I can't afford taxis. We're getting a taxi. Hello, Will. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. Well, is she still here? Yeah, come on in. Hi, Rosie. Hello, Will. What do you want? You're coming home, Rose. Come here. What now? Come here. What is it? You've written down the quiz answers. So? Well, what am I going to do now? That's just spite, that girl. Ruining one of me little pleasures. Well, you've got a million of us. Oh, and you've only copied the answers down. No, I never. Oh, so you got ten out of ten. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, who's the patron saint of hopeless cases? You what? You heard. Oh, I haven't time to be messing about with you. Come on, you got it right here. Montevideo. Montevideo? That's number six, love, not number seven. Number seven, St. Jude. That's what I meant. What are you doing? I'm fed up. And now I can see out onto the close and we're going to have a good look round. I'm getting up. Hallelujah! We done them dishes. Yeah. What's that pan then? Oh, we're leaving that to soak. Why? Well, it's got all gunky bits stuck to it. A bit of elbow grease will shift that, Damon. But we don't want to scratch the pan, though. Just do it. You always leave them to soak. Don't argue, Damon. Do it. There's anybody in this house who can do a job properly. Oh, come on. We've done it properly. It's only one lousy pan. Then do it. And when you've done that, you can mend your blazer. How can I mend me blazer? Damon. Will you just leave it and I'll do it? Oh, right. No, you don't. Them shoes. Get them shifted and clean them. Oh. What now? Not in here. Outside. Oh, but it's raining. It's only spitting. I'm getting sick of this. Yeah, well, you're not the only one, my lad. And when your father gets home, he's going to learn a few things about you. Do you think I'm down on my knees all day for you to go spreading your rubbish around? Mom? What? What? Do you want a cup of tea? No. You're having Mom. What's the matter, Mum? Nothing. What's the matter? Mom? Devin will get a job. He will. It's not that. Well, what is it then? I'm too old. Too old for what? Life begins at 40, Mum. That makes you only three. Some of my mates in school, oh, God, you'd knock spots off their mothers.
when they go to school, they all go, oh, God, I feel ashamed. But I don't, Mum. And I've never done that with you. I'm made off to tell Mum, look, there's my Mum. Isn't she great? And Damon leaving school's nothing. Well, it just means you've had all those young, doesn't it? Three kids raised and you're only your age. That's great. I don't know what you're saying, love. I do, Mum. You've got all the time in the world not to spend on yourself. No kids. No worries. No nothing. I've got to tell you something, love. What is it, Mum? Well, I'm not certain, love. I'm not certain. There we are now for me blazer. Mum, what is it? You see, love. Uh... Hello, lad. Hello, <laughs> Queen. Two sugars in my tea. Taxi, can I? I'm soaked. We'll get changed then. Why haven't you got a car? Because I can't afford a car. If you want a car, why don't you buy one yourself? I can't drive, can I? Well, I'll teach you. When? Whenever you like. Can you not see you're just being selfish? Oh, don't you start with a selfish business. That's all I got from Mom and Dad was shame. Shame, shame. Well, I've only come away to spare them their shame. How can you do that when the whole world knows? And why does the whole world know? Only because Mum and Dad were out organising me wedding. Like I didn't have a tongue in my own head. Ah, well, that's done. The whole world does know. So you're not sparing anybody any shame. You're only piling worry on top of it. Your mummy and Dad are out of their heads with worry about you. They've no need to worry. Have they not? How are you going to live? Have you thought about that? Who is there in England going to give a pregnant Irish girl a job? Where are you going to live? Do you think Heather will put up with you? She's got a life of her own. Will you tell her, Heather? Don't involve me, Will. I don't want to, Heather, but you're already involved. Do you want a teenage lodger? Long term? No. There you are, then. Rose, come and sit down. Not where I'm not wanted. I ain't putting dinners in the oven. It's lovely. It was even better an hour ago. Look, well, you're going to have to get used to this, aren't you? This is not going to be a nine till five job. You could phone if you're going to be late. Yeah, and you could put a ball and chain around me like, couldn't you, Queen? Where are you going? Make the tea. I'll get it, OK. What's wrong, you love? Nothing. Come on. I ain't seen good dinners go to waste. <clears throat> Look, everything's going right for once, isn't it? I've got a good job. It's a job I love. I'm earning more money than I've ever earned. Aye, aye, aye. Me, me, me. No, that's not fair, is it, she? You know it's for all of us. What am I supposed to do? Nurse maiden skivvy for one and all. Nurse maiden skivvy? What are you talking about? Damon's leaving school at all, Red. You're a free agent, girl. You can do what you want. Where are you going? Lie down. What about your tea? 
bring us a glass of milk if you like. Yeah, okay. I think the year of Big Brother has gone to your head, Will. Head or no head? This is family, Heather. So that entitled you to ride roughshod over a woman's feelings. Woman? She's only a wee girl. She's woman enough to conceive. Stupid enough. She wanted that baby. <laughs> Lord, for years Irish girls have been coming over here trying to lose their babies. But this one? Well, she won't even consider that. What will she do? She'll manage. How long are you staying for? I've got to be back by Wednesday night. With or without her. You won't mind if I stay? No. On your couch? Rose, where are you going? Bye! This is very silly. I'll not stay where I'm not wanted. You are wanted. That's not what you were saying before. You're going nowhere without me, Rose Thirdly, so you can forget the amateur dramatics. Oh, will you listen to it? Who are you to be telling me what to do? I'm your brother. And don't I know it? Big Brother Will, the best of everything for Big Brother Will. Mom and Dad and you huddled together for hours talking about your future. Well, what about me? I'm just a poor wee girl, so I'm supposed to work in a hospital and marry some doctor. Well, I'll not do it. I'll not go back to that. I'd sooner cut me throat. So it's a child of spite you're carrying, is it? Oh, no, you don't. Will you let me go? No, Rose, you're staying. Now, come on. I'm not. Yes, you are. Come on. Not having me worried as well. Come on, we'll talk. All right. Aye. Oh, What's with the milk all of a sudden? Bit of all burn, that's all. Thanks, love. How long are you going to stay up here? Only a bit. Should we both have an early night? Not now, no. Come on, Shay, what's wrong? Nothing. Yes, there is. Nothing. OK. Is there anything else you want? Okay. Well, have you noticed it as well? Yeah. What do you think it is? Well, she's feeling old. Old? Well, with Damon leaving school, makes her feel old. Go on. Well, she's feeling fed up too. But everything's just started to go right for us. Oh, I for you it has. Well, how do you mean? Well, she's feeling tired as well. I mean. In the last few months, there's been Damon near getting slung out of school. There's been Barry and all kinds of lumber. There's been Matty and the agency and that. And you being... Well, being a bit narky because of the dole and whatnot. What do you think I should do about it? Well, I know what I'd do if I was you. Go ahead. Well, I'd take her on a holiday. Not just a weekend at Auntie Claire's, but a really good holiday. Somewhere special. I don't know. What? Come here. Harold, I don't feel well. We haven't got any washing up liquid. Under the sink. How much do you use? Just a squirt. From a squirt. You are? Nothing. You know when you finish polishing me medals? Yeah. Will you clean me shoes? 
And when you've cleaned me shoes, there's a hole in the elbow of me jumper. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I want a letter posting. So if you go out, you can fetch us a few cans of ale back. But not that lager you brought last time. Jamie? Edna? Edna? What are you doing? I'm on strike. my feet up for a minute. Cup of tea? I'll make one in a minute. Girl in our school had a lovely surprise today. She won herself a holiday in Spain. Mm. Great. Wouldn't you just fancy Spain? <laughs> Not at the moment, I wouldn't love. Why? Out of the question, Karen. But there's nothing to stop you. Isn't there? Hi, Queen. Hi, where are you going? I'm Pleasant, and then I'm going to call in the travel agents. Have you mentioned her? No, and don't you? I want it to be a surprise. You're not going to believe this, but I've run out of sugar. Doesn't matter, Queen. I haven't got time. I'm in a world of my own these days. Go and ask next door, will you, Karen? Oh, wait, Mum. You can't keep borrowing cups of sugar around here. Yeah? Doesn't matter, she. I've got to shoot anyway. Go on, Karen. Ask Mrs. Cross, she won't mind. Don't you go till I get back? My God, I'm in demand today, aren't I? Hey! Come on, what is it? Hey? I don't know how to tell you. Hey, what's brought all this on? Hey, come here. Hey. Come on, come on, what is it? I don't know where to start. Look. I think... Hi. Damon, get lost with your son. I've only just got in. Oh, go on. No, it doesn't matter. Go on, I'll see you later. Are you sure now? To that kid. Are you talking? Yes. What do you call that? Me blazer. <laughs> oh, I told you I couldn't sew. Have you been walking around like that all day? Well, I had to. Now get it off. Hey! Has he gone? Yes. Oh, way! I told him not to. 
Do it again. Yes, love. I'm fancy a bit of a holiday in Spain or somewhere, uh, preferably with the flight from Liverpool, you know. Yeah. Um, could you have a look at this brochure? I have to leave in a couple of hours. Have you any more of these, Heather? I said I have to leave in a I couple of... I heard you. No, I haven't. That was Rogers. He liked puzzles then. He was one. You know, they're like life. You're working away figuring out. And the slightest little knock and it's... in pieces again. Yes. Would you listen to it? What are you going to do, Rose? She's coming back with me. I'm going to live my own life. That's what I'm going to do. I'm sick and tired of people organising my life for me. You don't need organising. I can manage on my own. Oh, you've made a grand job of it so far. You can't make her get married, Will. You know me better than that, Heather. I don't want to make her do anything except face up to her responsibilities. Responsibilities? Well, I've responsibilities to myself and to my baby, and that's all. What about your family? What about Timmy, who loves you? If they love me so much, they should want what's best for me. Fuck the do, girl. And what's best for me is staying here. Well, then why don't you come back with me and tell them that? If you're grown up enough to stay here, you're grown up enough to come back with me and tell your man, Da, and Timmy how you feel. Not go sneaking off in the middle of the night without so much as a buy your leave and the police searching the length and breadth of Ireland for you. If I go, they'll make me stay. I won't let them. You'll make me stay in all. You with all your fancy talk of responsibilities and God knows what else. Oh, Heather, will you tell her? Tell her what, Will? To go back. I can't do that. Just tell her to come home to put the family's mind at rest. I said I can't do it. You can't? You mean you won't? I mean nothing of the sort. Isn't she acting daft enough without you encouraging her? I'm not encouraging Rose. Well, if you won't tell her to go home, you must be encouraging her to stay. I'm simply saying the girl must make up her own mind. And meanwhile, you're putting her up in your home while my family's going out of their minds with worry. <coughs> Hello, Heather. What is it, Alan? Oh, lock myself out. Lock myself out, love. So what do you want? Well, well, I'm locked out. I was just wondering if you might have... Get out. What? Do you mind? We're having a conversation here, friend. I'll say who comes and goes in this house. I'm sorry, I haven't got time for your social niceties, Heather. Out. Just who do you think you are? He's drunk. This is my house. Oh, Anne, uh, you seem to want the open at the only way and stray. Oh, not content with living Rose's life for her. You want to live mine as well? Should have waited till he was sick on the carpet. I think you'd better go, Will. When I go, I'm taking her with me. You'll be a long time going then. 
You've got a short memory, Will. What was it you said to me in Ireland last year? Start being now what you want to be in ten years' time. Oh, what is it that you want for Rose? Do you want her to be married to a man she doesn't love, stuck in a city like Belfast, dying on its knees? Or is it one law for her and another for me? You're not my sister. You're a hypocrite, Will. Not at all. You're not my sister. You know nothing about my sister. You know nothing about sisters and brothers, Heather, because you've never had one. Heather Havisham, only child, never had to lift a finger. Everything she wanted, she got. Never had to get her hands dirty in all her life, and you want to give advice to my sister? Well, let me tell you, when it comes to sisters and brothers, you know everything there is to know about them. From how many times they used to wet the bed when they were a wee child, to how they used to get under the table when there was a thunderstorm. And here she is, putting on a brave face to the English, egged on by Heather Havisham, more English than the bloody English. And all I know is how easy it is for anybody to break that wee girl's heart. Rose, wait! I'm going to talk to her, and I'd prefer it if you'd gone when I get back. I like this one. No, it's no good. Where's the fella? What do you want the fella for? Test drive. You can't drive. I can sit in it, though. Oh, look, you don't want to go rushing into nothing, you know. I'm not rushing. It's only a test drive. Well, look what happened to George. He rushed into getting shot of the golf. Now he has to get the bus or walk everywhere. Hey, I bet you Marie's dead pleased. He didn't like driving the golf. Not with it being Petra's and that. Yeah, but I bet he wished he had some wheels now. What's he going to do with his money? Don't know. You'll have to ask him. I think he'd like to invest it in the two-liar business. Oh, behave. Nah, this one's no good. Why? You can't fit nothing in here. It's as big as anything else. Oh, ah, yeah, two matchboxes and it's chocker. We only need it for suitcases. No, we don't. What's ticking up there? Nothing. Yes, there is. Oh, yeah, let's have a look at that one, eh? Oh, come on. Oh, look, if me and Barry are going to start this two-liar business, we're going to need something bigger. I'm not buying a van. Well, what am I going to tell Barry? Listen, I'm buying this car for me, not for Barry Grant. He's back again. Who? Alan Partridge. Shall I bring him in? No! He's smashed our fence down. We don't want him smashing the house down. Paul, that looks as though he's locked out. Be the Christian thing to do. If you want to be Christian, you can make a cup of tea. No chance. If you want to go on strike, you suffer the consequences. I'm not on strike. I'm tired. He's coming over. To here? Yeah. Oh, don't let him, Harold. Oh, what's the matter with you, for God's sake? After what he did to us. He frightens me. You know he does. And what's he going to do to you with me? I did him so hard and so fast, he'd think he was surrounded. Round one. Get rid of him. Behave yourself. I want to thank him for destroying that fence. You must be mad. He scared us all to death. He didn't scare me. He did me a favour. Oh. Oh, H. Hello, Alan. Come in, lad. <coughs> Edna's not well. <coughs> you can wish her better. Oh. You're not too well, then, Edna, love. <coughs> hey, you're being asked a question here. Shh. I think she's asleep, Harry. She's pretending, eh? Hello, Alan. You're not very well, Edna, love. No. Hey, uh, I'm sorry about all that performance the other day. It wasn't your fault, Alan. That fence was a bloody eyesore. All the same, age. <coughs> <coughs> I must help you get it back up to what it was before. It's not going back as long as I live here. Brother, well. When I'm 65 years old, is he still going to be telling me what to do? You shouldn't have told him. No.
I think you should go and talk to him, Rose. There's no talking to him. But he has a point. If you're old enough to be in England, then you're old enough to go and face up to things. I am. Then go and do it. Go on, go and talk to him. He's mad. He's your brother. Will you come with me? No. Come on, you need to talk alone. Now look what you've done. Don't be blaming me. I don't want to be unkind, but I wish he'd go. How can he? He's locked his keys in the car. He can't get in. I know. Let's put our heads together. Think of a way of getting him out. I'll get him out if you get up. All right. Edna, all right. I'm thinking. Anything to get out the house? Oh, snap. Yeah, I saw you propping up the wall. <laughs> You're all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. It's just lovely to be out. Huh? Sheila? Mm -hmm. You've had three children. Yes. <laughs> Supposing you were having another one. What makes you ask that? Someone I know is pregnant. Somebody you know? Hmm. I'm just wondering what advice I can give her. I don't want to be shoving my ideas down your throat. No, you wouldn't. Children are God-given. God-given? Inflicted, I'd say. God given. Even though sometimes they can be given at very awkward times. Well, there's no question of her not having a baby. Is it you, Heather? No! <laughs> no, Sheila, it isn't. Or if it is, it's another immaculate conception. <laughs> Well, who is it, then? Oh, no, sorry, I'm being nosy. It's someone very dear to me. Grant. G-R-A-N-T. There is a second name. Bobby. Bobby Grant. But he's the district secretary of your union. OK, he starts soon as a district secretary. Yeah, OK. Hey, what do you want him for? Damon, it's nothing to do with you. Well, could you just ask him if he's been to any travel agents yet, please? Travel agents? Shh. What's he on the travel agents for? Oh, come on, what's going on? It's nothing to do with you, Tim. Don't... don't breathe a word. What's going on now? Nothing. Yesterday, she's been on the phone. Just one way, Tim. Stitch me blazer, then. Stitch your lip. She's been on the phone trying to get hold of me, Dad. All right. What? I'll do it. Oh, Tarkags. Why? Why what? Why have you been trying to get hold of your dad? I hope he's having you on. Oh, yeah. Come on. 
I didn't mean to come between you and Heather. There's nothing between me and Heather. I've seen the way you look at each other. You're talking rubbish. No doubt. Will you do me a favour at home, Will? Aye. Will you give this back to Timmy? God, the poor man's still paying for it. Don't. Ach, I didn't come over here to make you feel bad, Rosie. I know. You can tell them all at home I'm fine. Why? They've agencies here find your rooms for fifteen pound a week. Rooms? They're cupboards. You're off then. Aye. Rose? I'm staying. You haven't asked if you can yet. If that's all right. You're more than welcome. She's talking about getting some Tuppence Hippany flat and God knows where. Oh, don't worry. I won't let that happen. I'll look after her, I promise. I'm so... I... Go on. I'm sorry I can't help the way I speak, Will. I. Or the way I am. I am as I am. I had no right, Heather. Just, I love this wee sister of mine. I know. You're no hypocrite, Will. I think we all are in our own way. Bye bye, Rosie. Look after yourself. Well, bye bye, Will. Bye bye. You could stay. <laughs> what? Well, the last time I was here, it was you wanting me to leave, me wanting to stay. And now you want to go. Now, Rose is staying here and I have to leave. But I tell you one thing. If I stay here again, I won't be on that couch. Soft woman. Oh, I say, lad. Well, what are you up to, son? Like that. Hey, you can't be doing that. Who do you think you are, John Wayne? Oh, Hello, Popeye, lad. What's this? Me new hat. Why? Do you want to borrow it? <laughs> Thanks. Where are you going? Out. Pretty stuff, eh? Linda's. Ah, oh, the one you met in the blind school. Oh. <laughs> Where's our Karen? Eh, uh, gone down the shops. She's been trying to get hold of you all day. What for? Don't know. Listen, where's your mother? Upstairs. Go and tell her. Mum! Have you been? Why did you risk me? Did you book? Of course you did. I've been trying to get her. What's going on? I don't. <laughs> Send your niece a glance, I have the tickets. The what? The tickets on the big hat. What's going on? Me and you, Spain, our oldies. When? In a fortnight. Oh, no. What? Love. I can't go.
kiss a kiss. Get off. And don't do that again. I nearly died. Oh, I thought you were all dead. I've been banging on the front for ages. Oh, don't say that. Oh, sorry. Where's, um? She and George have gone down to something at the new school. The kids started the comp in September. So you're babysitting then? No, they've gone as well. Um, before you get any ideas, I've got this lot to finish. Oh, can't you leave it till later? No. But it's after six. And she wants it done. It's like winkling. What? When the landlords make it tough for the tenants to get them out. It's poor winkling. She's been on about this lot all day. Is she trying to push it out? I don't know. I've got to do something. And I'd rather do this than look after the kids. We going out? I haven't got a car again. God, it'll have to be the swan. I hate that place. I'm skint. Oh, not again. I'm sick of this. Well, I thought we could stay in and go through a few of these. What? Cars, used ones. Look, I've marked a few down. Well, let's have a look. Uh, you finish the washing off, I'll read them out. I can read, you know. I know, yeah, but it'll save time, won't it, if I read them out while you're finishing the washing off? Time for what? You know. Didn't tell you, did I? What? I've got the ironing to do as well. I'm starving, cream, what are we having? I'm salad. Oh, lovely. Where's the kids? Our, our Karen's out. We won't see any sign of the other two until this match is over. Ah, oh, peace at last, eh? Anyway, we don't seem to get any time on our own, do we? What about our Damon? He'll be hanging around now he's left school. I don't know. Kids, you never seem to get shots of them. Anyway, she, I think 16 years is enough time for any man to spend on his kids. What have you been doing out there? Everything. I just got to knock them nettles back into the woods. It'll be like gardener's world out there. You're keen all of a sudden, aren't you, gardening? Yeah, well, I'm in the mood, aren't I? I mean, it makes all the difference when you've got something to think about while you're doing it, isn't it? Oh, I. How will I have, haven't I? New job. Nice little holiday in Spain. And with a bit of luck, Liverpool winning the European Cup. I don't mind a bit of boring old garden when I've got all that stressed out in front of me. And the bread for you. Look, don't mind the bread, eh, Queen? Not again, love. See, most people spend a fortnight lying in the sun just worrying about going back to work. Well, with us, it's different, isn't it, Queen? I mean, this is a bonus for us, love, isn't it? This is the icing on the cake. We've been through it all, love. We haven't, because you won't even think about it, will you? Look, there'll be no washing, no cooking, no cleaning, no running around after the kids. We haven't even got to get in debt for it, have we? Yeah, but you just sprung it on me, didn't you? You come home with two tickets and a silly hat and expect me to pack up and go to Spain. It was a surprise. Yeah, well, I get enough surprises in this house. I don't need to go all that way. Look, you need the break. Let's go. Let's make the most of it while things are going right for us for once. It's no good. It won't shift. You're doing it all wrong. I shouldn't be doing it at all in my condition. There's nothing the matter with you. There will be if I've got to shift all this upstairs. Just take your time and you'll do fine. The exercise might even do you some good. Oh, aye. And what are you going to do to help? I'm going to show you how to tap. Didn't they teach you that on the railways? Get out of my light. Here's a tea veg with a long MOT. And it's a 259 number. So it's around here somewhere. How about that? How about what? What I've just said. You're reading them out too fast. How do I know about MOTs and things? I'm supposed to be advising it, aren't I? Well, advise me slower, then. Will you stop following me about? Just go and sit down somewhere. Yeah, it is another t -Veg. It's 1979. And it's in the state. It's taxed to and all. I've told you, the state's too dear. New, yeah, but this is only 1800. Is that good? Not bad. And you can get a lot of stuff in them as well. Stuff for Grant's Tool Eye Limited. I meant shopping and things like that. Yeah, well, you just read them to yourself and I'll have a look when I finish this. Hi there, Michelle. Hello. I usually see the twins at this time of day. They're out. Can't hear the quiet. That George is a wicked sense of humour. He told me there's a maniac steals a washing around here. That sounds like him. I love that blouse. Yeah, it is nice. Yours, is it? Mm, I run a catalogue. I got it from that. It's a lovely shade. Maybe I could get something from your catalogue. Yeah, I'll drop it round for you. I've hardly been near a shop 
since I came to Liverpool. Would you fancy bring it round now? No, I'm too busy with this lot. I'll make your tea and all. Well, thanks, but I've got my fella here, Terry. Both of you come. We're plenty in. I'll see you in a moment then, Michelle. Thanks. Thought you were busy. I'll finish now. Well, what about the iron? What? I'll pull in your leg. Oh, wait, do we have to go in there? Do you still want to help me choose this car? Yeah, but I don't want to Well, to... mind your manners next door and I'll let you. You need a break, girl. Can't you see it? Bob. No, listen, Queen. Just think back over the last 12 months. Do you realise what you've had to put up with? First of all, I lost my job. Then our Damon nearly screwed up his schooling. Then me and Karen fell out over that squaddy fella, Mike. Barry decided to join the Merseyside Mafia. And you, you nearly worked yourself to death with that agency, didn't you? Then poor Matty got caught by the Social Security. Then all that lumber with the Cummins fella. I'd need two sets of hands, love, if I wanted to count everything that's happened to us in the last 12 months. And you know the worry of us all? I've been carried by you. Yeah, but I'm all right now. No, you're not, girl. You want to just take a look at yourself. Love, we haven't been able to talk to you, have we? If only one said anything to you, you bit our heads off. And do you know why? Because of all them things I've just mentioned. It's a sort of a... I don't know, a delayed strain. But I know this, if you went to the doctor and told him, do you know what he'd say to you? Mrs Grant, you need a holiday. Well, you've got one. I just think it's the wrong time, love. No, the wrong time to have gone for us. It's exactly the right time to go. To get you back to your old self. And as me as well, you know. I mean, I went through a sticky patch, didn't I? But now I've got this job, well, we might get another chance. I mean, you've had a taste of what it's like, working round the clock, meetings of a night, weekend work and stuff like that. I mean, it could be next summer before I get a week off. And I just think we could do it a bit of time on our own. Look, Damon's out of school, out of work. God knows what kind of trouble he'll get into if we're away. I'll frighten the life out of him before we go. There's the money. Look, it's paid for and the spending money. Yeah, but we'll need... There's things need paying off. I've let things get behind. Look, I'll be here in the next month, won't I? Nearly £200 a week. Yeah, but we might need something to fall back on. Oh, Sheila, we'll be able to afford to save a few bob out of that. I know. Oh, come on, girl, it's all fixed up, isn't it? All we've got to do is get to the airport and get on the plane. Don't tell me you're scared of flying or something like that. No. Let's go away and have a good holiday. I don't want to go. Do you know what? I don't understand you. You make me sick. Anyone has to be made up to go. Where have you been? Had to have a rest, didn't I? The other things are ready to go up now. Oh, those stairs. They're steep. And these beds are heavy, do you think, you know? You've carried one little piece. I carry heavier weights in a shopping bag. You haven't got a heart condition. Take the smaller bits first and work your way up to the bigger bits. Take your time. I will. Oh, it was a mistake getting this place. What? We should have had a bungalow. I wanted a bungalow. You're right there, Edna. I can't be doing with this. You admit I was right, then. Do you? Well, the bungalow we saw in Bournemouth was very nice. I mean, sea air would have been good for your chest. I told you. Yes, but the neighbours, they were getting on a bit, weren't they? I mean, you couldn't rely on them to help us like they do around here. They've never done one little thing. And him next door, all he did was smash our fence down. He's a big lad, though, isn't he? He's a monster. He could give me hand to take this up. No. I think I'll just stroll round to see if he's available. Harold, don't you dare! But not about the baby. Oh, well, that's the way it is. Did you see Will? Mm, I really like him. If you were his sister and with a baby on the way, you mightn't think so. Was he annoyed? Annoyed? He came to drag me back by the scruff of my neck to marry the father. Shame on the family and all that. Is he still here? No. He went days ago. Good riddance. God help the daughter he ever has. 
So you're going to have the baby and bring it up on your own? That's the way I decided. I admire you for that. Do you? You're the first I've found. You and Terry are going to get married. I mean, it's a bit early to say it, like, isn't it? I might just do what you're doing, Rose. I hope you don't have to, Michelle. Anyway, I'll be getting a bad name corrupting the neighbours. Me and Heather have it from both. Heather? Heather, no. A joke. She never has a head out of a ledger long enough to corrupt anyone. It's just this house. It's got a divorcee or soon to be one. And now, an unmarried mother. Isn't Heather seeing anyone? A fella like? Not that she's told me. It'd be nice if she got married again. I liked Roger, but he was rotten doing that. Well's got his eye on her, that's for sure. Has he? You should have been here the evening he left. Talk about electricity in the air. No, I reckon she'd marry him tomorrow. You can tell. Oh, it's Heather. Heather, I never heard you come in. Well, that's quite clear, Rose. I suppose you're far too busy talking. Ready. Oh, none for me, old man. I haven't got time. What? Not for me. I'm late. You could have said. I thought I did. You didn't. Have you seen the Oxblood shoe polish for my brogues? No, I haven't. I could have sworn I saw it in here the other day. Why aren't you eating? Because I'm going out. What have you done? Chicken casserole. Oh, that again. Never mind, it'll keep. Oh, I have to wear my sweats. Oh, this is too much. Well, it is. You've been out every night since Mum's been at Grand's. Have I? She's coming back tomorrow. I'm well aware of that. How's the new job going, Heather? It's fine. Oh, good. Is it better than the other one? Better? Well, is it? It's fine. Would you like some more potato, Terry? No, I'm um, fine, thanks. Can I get you a beer? A beer? Yeah. yeah, please, Rose. Well, left some behind. <sighs> Terry. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Rose. Sorry. Right. The glass. Sorry. Michelle brought a catalogue around, Heather. I thought I might look at the baby clothes, you know, get a few things in. Well, I hope you realise they have to be paid for regularly. Will left me some cash. Well, you pay more, buying through a catalogue. Well, not that much. Not really. Yes, but more than Rose can afford. Perhaps you should be asking Heather, Michelle. She's the one with a good job. <laughs> and the mortgage, rates, lights, heat, and so on. even to me. What do you want? Just to see you. You've seen me. We are ratty, aren't we? Don't I even get the offer of a drink? One drink, then off. Glasses are over there. And second thoughts is a bit early for me. Well, how are you? Apart from drinking too much. Broke. I don't believe that. As far as you're concerned, I am. I noticed you didn't keep a picture of me. Put that down, will you? Now then, what do you want? To come back. Come back? We had a good thing going. It was only that kid and his computer. We had nothing. We did. More than you ever had with that little... What did you say? 
I wouldn't have left you in the lurch. What were you going to call her? Alan. Get out. Go on. Just go, will you? Alan, I'm sorry. I didn't Get mean... Get out before I knock you out. You'll not get away with that. I'm going to count to ten. I'll be back. Well, I'm off now. What are your plans? I've got no choice. Computer studies O next week. It's this and only this. You'll sail through it. Where are you going? Oh, only for a few drinks. I'll who with? Mrs. Salter and one or two others from the YTS management. By way of a farewell. I thought you hated them. Who? The YTS lot. Mrs. Salter and her colleagues I rather like, actually. More than Mrs. Tate. What does that mean? What you see in her? At least that Mrs. Salter, she does something. Mrs. Tate, Dorothy, is a very good primary school headmistress. As well as that, she's a very pleasant, interesting person. Who tries to muscle her way into somebody else's family when her own is broken up. That's a disgraceful thing to say. Well, it's true. Look, Dorothy needed help recently. And not just from me, from your mother as well. well that's why Mum's gone off to Grant, is it? Look, your mother's coming back home tomorrow. And I can I possibly rely on you to put these stupid suspicions out of your head once and for all? There's nothing between Dorothy and me, is that clear? Now, perhaps you might find time to clear this place up a little. Cover up all traces of the bachelor life, eh? I've got my revision. It's not asking too much, surely. Won't be long. You'll excuse me, I'd like to get on with some work. Thanks to me, I'll have her. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Oh, don't thank me. Thank Rose. Thanks, Rose. It's all right. Well, if Heather's busy, we'd better get off. Terry, you haven't finished your beer. Would you like to tell me how to go about ordering those baby clothes? Are you sure? Oh, yes, I'm sure. I'd sooner it was in the morning. Can't you fit me in? All right, all right, tomorrow night. Quarter to seven. Should I drop that in in the morning as well? OK. Right, bye. He can be in a quarter of an hour in his car. I'm not calling our Kevin. I will, then. No. Look, he's me son. Is your son and you never invite him anymore. You'd be inviting him just to use him and I'm not having that. All right, then. I'll go and try and partridge you again. No, I don't want him in here. Uh, we can manage. Now, come on. Oh. <sighs> it was nice to meet you both properly. Thanks again. The meal was lovely. Try, Heather. Bye. See you, Heather. Bye-bye, Terry. Next time you feel like inviting neighbours to eat and giving them your views on my personal affairs, Rose, perhaps you'd consult me first. Do you think we ought to go back and apologise to Heather? Behave. Well, I don't want Rose to get into trouble for inviting us. Look, I didn't want to go in the first place, did I? Just leave it, I. Eh? Are we going in, then? Yeah, just to get my bag, and then we're going out again. All right, all right. Liz? Said I'd be back, didn't I? Put your back into it, woman. Push! I am pushing! Push! Oh, you sound like a flaming midwife. Shut up!
do that? Yeah. What's that bird Alan kicked out? What's she doing back here? I'll go. You can't go, not with your heart. Oh, I'll go, all this. Rabbit touch upside down. You have to go in, they might hurt each other. Well, it's none of our business, is it? Well, I think we should make it our business. Oh, can't somebody stop him? Don't let him come outside, you'll murder him. What on earth is happening? Edna! It stopped now. We're oh, going. Be a long time before he does you lot any favors. 